Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the GFS then we'll go through the NAO, AO and the zone mean uh, winds and then we'll go have a look at the GM, Eastern GF, Eastern GF and GFS ensembles and we'll finish up with the UK Met Office 5 day precipitation and temperature. Now we currently have a cold front spreading southwards across the country some patchy rain along it, but mostly just some cloud. And we do have some wintry showers that start to be packing in uh, to the north and the northeast over the next 12 hours or so. Not a massive cold spell by any means, but it will be turning much colder tomorrow for many areas, especially in these three or four degrees highs and really cold overnight temperatures. So some proper wintry weather over the next day or two. But in the longer term, it isn't looking encouraging, I must say. We'll have a look at a lot of the uh, stats now uh, and, the, and looking at the NAOAO indexes. And they are showing that it's looking likely that westerly winds will dominate um, the next few weeks. And remember, I know we still have the whole of February left. But with how these indexes are going and the zone mean winds, especially high up in the atmosphere, doesn't look like we could be seeing much cold weather um, from uh, the next couple of weeks really into maybe the first third of February. So we're running out of room now to see much colder weather. But of course, we'll have a look today. Um, and not all hope is lost, um, but there definitely is a trend to going thing, uh, things going much more westerly. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well. The link is in the description. Uh, also posted a podcast earlier. Have a look at the Tongan volcano and what effects it could have on our climate. And that has been posted out to channel members. Um, and of course, it will be released to the public on Friday. So we do run through the GFS at the moment. You can see we have a northerly wind, but that's going to be moved away very quickly. Quite a cold air mass. If we do quickly have a look at the 850 HPA temperature, quite a cold air mass moving down the eastern side of the country before it does topple by around Friday lunchtime. And milder air does push southwards, but it's still under high pressure, so still will be um, some um, from or frost towards the surface, and potentially we'll still be seeing... Um, uh, colder days but it's unsure exactly at this stage what that may look like uh, all depends on orientation exact air masses so we do move through you can see high pressure continues around the next week however as we head through the last days of january you can start to see those westerly winds gathering big low pressure systems out towards northeast canada southern greenland powering up and it's looking likely that we start to bring much more low pressure um, or lower pressure in off the Atlantic. Now you can see high pressure is trying to hold on in the south and the east, um, and that could potentially turn things maybe colder if we start to see a bit of an easterly, which the GFS is trying to hint at. But I'm looking just to our north and our uh, on our west, looking out towards northern Canada, Greenland. All those purples and blues, symbolic of a very powerful tropospheric polar vortex, and that is going right through the atmosphere very strong all the way up to the stratosphere and generally westerly winds um, although at the moment on this year first one we would be pretty chilly still under higher pressure the long-term trends are not for a bitterly cold spell as you see here we can still see some colder weather but bitterly cold spell not looking likely um, of course we could see polar mass on air masses with these vigorous lows as well with if we do see a bit of northwest southeast alignment of the jet stream which is very possible and we'll have a look at the east mwf ensembles at the end of the video which are very much hinting at that so again not all hope is lost but for a, a northerly or easterly blocked pattern not looking particularly encouraging and if we do have a look at the nao and ao uh, which I have explained quite a lot over the last few videos. Basically, an index showing um, positive, showing more of a westerly pattern, negative for both of these, showing more blocked, more amplified jet stream. Uh, so NAO, meaning the North Atlantic, and then the AO, meaning the Arctic. So in the North Atlantic, things are staying around neutral. So not really above, west, above average westerly winds, but not below average either. So it's just a general westerly pattern in the north atlantic but because it's neutral we still see some natural ridging from the higher pressure pushing northwards and that's why as we saw in that gfs run it isn't a flat westerly with those blues and purples over the top of the uk because the north atlantic isn't fully in a positive phase so we're still going to see those ridges and that's why i say there's a possibility of polar maritime air masses moving through and not all hopes lost it's not going to be a massive storm fest at this stage 
but definitely westerly momentum looks like it's going to be outweighing any other drivers of our weather. If we do have a look at the AO, you can see massively positive, especially in the longer term. It's around one at the moment or moving to one, and then most of the ensemble members go uh, between one to around three, and some going even higher than that. Um, that would be big low pressure systems locking in that cold over the Arctic, powering the westerly jet stream. There's a couple going negative, and of course those will be more blocked, and those will be the outlier runs showing potentially cold weather. But at this stage, I wouldn't put too much weight into those as it's looking like they are very much in the minority. Now, if we do have a look at the zone mean winds, now this is the GFS operational run. So, of course, it's not exact. Of course, the ensembles um, can flicker between this. But we're seeing a consistent signal now from the GFS of strong uh, winds, especially up in the stratosphere. We've had them at the moment and they're potentially getting even stronger and may couple with the troposphere not an exact coupling i.e um as you can see the north atlantic oscillation isn't going massively positive um it's remaining around neutral westerly winds will be dominating but you can see these strong polar vortex winds are not going to get right down to the surface um, and couple with the troposphere but we are still generally going to see it power up the westerly winds you can see in the stratosphere it's very very strong um, on the left chart you can see those reds and even pinks in the longer term 55 to 70 meters per second wow that is really strong towards the surface more green which is showing generally westerly flow um, of course if we, if we wanted to see any massive blocking we want blues potentially down towards the surface showing more of an easterly momentum but we're not seeing that. And you can see on the right, the anomaly chart, a lot of red. So that's above average westerly winds. You can see that all throughout the atmosphere. The surface has less, of, of course, because um, depending on all different pressure patterns and stuff that can change um, that westerly flow. And we don't expect that to be slightly positive westerly flow. And you can see there is very li little negative anomaly, perhaps some right in the longer term. And of course, that could be because of that high pressure coming up from the uh, mid-Atlantic could be controlling that a little bit but you can see generally in the most of the atmosphere very very strong westerly momentum which is not good for locked in coal and this is why i say it's looking unlikely because these big uh, anomalies towards the last few days of january first few days of february will feed through the atmosphere over that like week or two after it so it's very unlikely if this does verify that we could be seeing anything massively blocked for the first probably 10 days of February, maybe longer. Um, and if we were going to see anything massively cold, um, we would need to be seeing some signs of this stratospheric wind reducing perhaps in the longer term towards early February. At this stage, there are some hints potentially of some warning, warnings, especially in some individual de deterministic runs, operational runs. But the general ensemble forecast isn't showing a massive reduction in these zonal winds. Uh, if they are, only to around average. So doesn't look encouraging for any massive blocked weather. Now, if we do have a look at the GM run, see how that does compare. It only goes up to day 10. So we're not going to see massive westerlies on this. As again, the next seven days don't, generally does look high pressure orientated. But we will see some westerlies. You can see, again, high pressure toppling over that northerly wind. And you can see the westerly momentum starting to build with those purples over northeast Canada. It's going to turn America quite cold um, as that cold air is going towards northern Canada. And it means whenever they get a little bit of a northerly plunge, there's bitterly cold air ready. Uh, we could be seeing a few nor'easters as well down uh, the east coast of America. And you can see actually one exiting out of um, northeast Canada there into the jet stream. And as we head towards day 10, you see the big purples, high pressure trying to hang on. And right towards day, day 10, you can see again this sort of northwest southeast alight with the jet stream because we have high pressure, strong as ours high, trying to ridge northwards. And it does turn us, it could turn us temporarily cold, which is a bit mild sector there. But of course, the air direction is coming from southern Greenland, so it would go cold temporarily. But at this stage, I'm not expecting anything major uh, with that. You just see a general westerly flow with a bit of amplification in the jet stream, perhaps bringing in northerly or northwesterly flows for a period of time. So not going to be guaranteed mild conditions to end January, but it's not looking blocked and cold either. Now, if we do have a look at the ECDF, how see how that does compare to day 10. Again, high pressure toppling, high pressure hanging around. And as we go towards day 10, 
High pressure is still hanging around. We're not seeing as much Wesley momentum. Those purples staying much more towards Greenland and the far northern extent of Canada. So much less low pressure coming out of northeast Canada um, and America. So less mostly momentum because these high pressure is migrated slightly further eastwards. And this would actually be pulling up some balmy weather from the south. You can see the wind direction is coming up from the south under higher pressure. Could potentially be going very, very mild with that. A similar pattern to what we saw at the end of December and start of January with the southerly or southwesterly winds. Um, so if you're looking towards 15 degree weather, the SC Syndria F front would be giving you that at day 10. Not got a lot of support by any means from the ensemble members. It's a milder outlier as most are either showing a west or northwesterly wind. And if they're not showing that, just high pressure over the top of the UK with a bit of an inversion. So this very much is an outlier run, but it does show you um, there is still a lot of uncertainty in the long term. Not guaranteed to be going mild and westerly at this stage, but that is uh, probably in the majority at this stage. So if you do have a look at the Eastern VF Ensemble, we'll see how this does compare. If we go out to day seven, um, you can see very little uncertainty within the ensembles at the stage. All got high pressure over the top of the UK, just slightly different orientations. Could change uh, the surface conditions very slightly um, in terms of inversion and, and air temperatures. If we go out to day 10, there's a bit more uncertainty, but all still have high pressure over the top of the UK. Some have it slipping away to the south, more low pressure. You can see all that blues towards green and more low pressure influencing, potentially turning things a bit milder and more settled from the north but again no massive differences between these uh, these ensemble members at day 10 and of course you see the operational run there at day 10 um slightly different to the other runs potentially showing a bit more of a southerly flow there so okay so again there could be some milder or colder runs within these ensemble members and as i said all depends on the exact position of the high pressure and its orientation now if we go to 300 hours where i'm expecting a bit more uncertainty you can see here that high pressure is slipping away more low pressure dominant from most of these ensemble members because the 18 including the control run with that northwest southeastern line of the jet stream as i said that we could be seeing with that gem run high pressure bridging up towards southern greenland north or northwesterly winds that would be colder unsettled um, but it wouldn't be locked in cold by any means. We need to get that high pressure further northwards for any locked in cold. A similar from a similar run from the, the 14 high pressure, a bit further northwards. So again, a northwest southeast alignment of the jet stream. That again could be quite cold and could be quite wintry as well, especially across northern areas. So it is looking westerly, but again, as I said previously, not guaranteed to be completely mild. Um, just not looking likely of any locked in cold northerly or easterly winds where we're getting that minus 10 line in uh, where it's staying um, low temperatures for like a week or two and it's unlikely at this stage to be seeing anything like that another 11 have high pressure over the top of the uk something similar to what we have now another eight have westerly winds again Bit of high pressure pushing it further northwards, a um, bit more of a northwest alignment, but you can see that jet stream is driving further southwards, so would be generally milder for the UK as it's got such a long sea track. Um, we'll be putting up quite a lot of milder air there. Air there. Those centre of the lows, quite close to Iceland and Scotland with this jet stream. Wouldn't be surprised to be some seeing some named storms with this pattern. Again, only eight of the ensemble members. If you go right towards the end, you can see again, all very similar with the high pressure to our south. Um, and low pressure to our north, 18, again, high pressure over the top, 14, have more of a northwest, southeast alignment of the jet stream, but it's looking quite unsettled. Another 11 have more southerly winds, and another 8 have just generally really quite unsettled conditions. If we do have a look at the GFS ensembles, you can see, if we go to, go to the entry of the HPA uh, temperature and precipitation, if we go to the 12 that are run, as it's almost come out, uh, only got out to 10 days, actually, so we've got a few days at the end, uh, not there, but you can see uh, over the next 10 days where it really does matter, no lot of uncertainty. Temperatures, of course, quite far, far below average at the moment, with much colder air sinking southwards for temperatures return to above and stay around average or slightly above average for the next week to 10 days. Um, some going colder, not many going much milder. So again, just generally average conditions. Inversion with a lot of high pressure, see very minimal precipitation spikes. So looking dry and especially in the south likely to see a version a continuation of overnight frost and daytime temperatures of around five to seven degrees so yeah just continuing with what we have at the moment january could turn out to actually be a quite a chilly month around average maybe i'm expecting at this stage it's around 1.5 to 2 degrees above average at the moment but only about a week or 
uh, oh yeah, about a week ago, um, it was around four degrees above average. So if we see another week or two of this much colder weather, um, or around average to below average conditions, especially with those overnight frosts pushing mean temperatures for the day down, wouldn't be surprised to see the mean CT for this month come to around average around three or four degrees. So it could be quite a cold month um, in the end January. Um, I mean, we, if we did see a real mild end, it would be very much a milder month. But if we did see a continuation of high pressure, frosty nights, and generally around average chilly days, um, yeah, we could be seeing uh, a below average or an average month, even though it's not looking like we're going to be seeing any major cold for any parts of the country um, over the next week or two. Now, if we do finish up, have a look at the UK Met Office run, have a look at precipitation and temperature, you can see Earlier this morning, we did see a weather front slowly pushing south, and as you can see, a few wintry showers packing into the north. Again, shouldn't be too significant, but could be a few tonight, and some accumulations possible across parts of Aberdeenshire, maybe parts of northern Scotland, and a few showers down the east coast, maybe down to East Anglia for tomorrow morning, could see a few wintry showers. So if you are in that corner of East Anglia, near Norwich perhaps, you could be seeing a few snowflakes over the next 12 hours or so, so do keep an eye out for that. Elsewhere, though, it's going to be dry, clear skies, and very cold and frosty. Thursday's going to be a really chilly day. You can see not much cloud, uh, not many showers, maybe a few a bit of cloud in the east from decayed showers. But generally things are going to be pretty nice and sunny, but it's going to be cold and going to feel raw in the east with quite a cold wind chill. Thursday night's going to be another real hard overnight frost, but some cloud is slipping southwards, and depending on how that does progress, that could right at give a rise in temperature um, from with frost potentially peaking around midnight on Friday but we'll have to see how that does play out and again Saturday some showers potentially in the north and through Sunday again showers in the north but generally air is pretty dry if you have a look at max temperatures early this morning an isolated frost here or there but nothing too major with more cloud around this afternoon temperatures 8 to 10 degrees in the south, a bit milder with a bit, a bit of a milder wedge, mix, more mixing of air, but it's colder across Scotland. And overnight tonight, temperature's going to really drop away uh, by early hours of tomorrow, uh, drop rate around freezing widely for sunrise and for rush hour tomorrow, freezing pretty much everywhere in England, Wales, Scotland, and quite a lot of the Republic of Ireland. A few coastal areas and maybe some city centres may hover above freezing um, as um, the frost is only going to restart, really reach some of these areas, especially in the south, um, until sort of around 6 a.m. It'll reach freezing, so some areas may not quite see it. But you can see across the north and parts of Scotland, minus 2 to minus 5 quite widely. Thursday, as I said, is going to be a very chilly day, max of 3 Four degrees is some spots in the west could see five to seven degrees but it's going to feel raw with a chilly northerly wind really quite cold um, but thursday night you see by around 9 10 p.m widely temperatures dropping to freezing coldest temperatures are likely to be in the far south as i said that cloud is moving southwards bringing in a rise in temperatures and by 8 9 a.m minus one to minus three degrees widely across the south and east by friday in the day Five to seven degrees, a bit of remnants of cold there, but as I said, that high pressure is toppling, so turn uh, a little bit milder. Saturday morning again, another frost potentially across parts of Midlands, but elsewhere hovering above freezing. Saturday night or Saturday afternoon is going to be six, seven degrees, so again, just five to seven degree highs and around freezing at night. And Sunday, just see a repeat of that frost for a few areas, most areas though, two, three degrees, and in the day, temperatures around six or seven. So again, not too dissimilar to what we've had over the last week or two. Um, continuation of this frosty nights and measly average days with a lot of sunshine around for some, maybe a few showers in the north, and of course maybe some wintriness um, and some quite a biting wind chill in the east. Long term though, it does look like westerly winds will be winning out and we'll have to see of course what that does entail, whether it's going to be a northwesterly flow, a bit of a chillier um, polar maritime air mass, or whether it's going to be a flat westerly, a more stormy, or whether the high pressure does hold on, especially over the southern half of the UK. Uh, we'll have to see, of course, how that does play out. But if you are looking for a massive sustained cold spell, it's not looking particularly encouraging, unfortunately. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.